Welcome to the very important lecture on hypothesis testing. I am going to introduce the concept of hypothesis testing with this lecture. If you do not understand this lecture, you will not understand any of the future lectures. So please concentrate and understand well the concept that I will be talking in this specific lecture. In hypothesis testing, what is the first step? The first step, of course, we need to have a hypothesis. We call this as alternative hypothesis. We denote that as HA. Okay, we'll start with example. In the previous example, the birth weight of the babies born to HIV infected mothers is significantly less in comparison to the normal birth weight. So this is mu H is significantly less than mu normal. What is the second step? The second step is stating the null hypothesis. I told you to test our hypothesis, whether it is different, whether it is associated, you need to know what is normal. In null hypothesis, we understand what is normal. We state that mu h is not significantly different from mu n. Right? The third one is you need to decide whether this test is one tail test or two tail test. Here we are only interested in lower side, so it is one tail test. What is the next step? You should have a basic understanding about what is the exact test that you are going to do to test this specific hypothesis. Here, generally, to test the mean difference of two groups, you have to choose the t-test. So the fourth step is deciding the statistical test. Here it is t-test. I will discuss t-test in another lecture. So for the moment, keep in mind for this hypothesis, it is t-test. But for other hypothesis, we have several other tests. We have Z test, R test, ANOVA, MANOVA, and many other tests depending on the various hypothesis that we are testing in a practical setup. So it is test. Of course, once you decide the test, you have to do the research. That means you have to collect data, you have to enter the data, and you have to analyze the data. Once you analyze the data, you will have to decide the critical region. We call that as rejection region. What is rejection region? I told you, in null distribution, what is the exact area in here? We are interested in null distribution, 5% of this one. Whether you are interested in 5% or 1% or 10%, what is the exact percentage that you need as the rejection region? Because you are going to reject the null hypothesis if it falls in this range. You decide your rejection region based on your experience, based on the past evidence, once you decide, you will have the value from this one. We call that as test. As we have performed the test, once after the data analysis, you will get something called test statistic. Test statistic. We have in T test, we will have a T value. If it is R test, it will be R value. If it is Z test, it will be Z value. So like that, say are several uh, test statistics are there, you will get a test statistic. Based on the test statistic, the final step is you will get a p-value. 
P value means I told you. If you can't remember the P value, please go and watch the, the lecture on P value. Okay, example, assume that. So P value equals 0 0.02. That means 2%. That means in according to this hypothesis, 2% of the normal birth weights will be less than the birth weight of the baby is born to HIV infected mothers. But even though 2%, it's very really less amount of normal birth weights are there, that is enough. We consider that as abnormal. So like that, you will get a p-value based on the p-value. You decide whether to reject null hypothesis or whether to accept null hypothesis. In general, we don't accept null hypothesis, but we state that there's no evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, I will discuss a bit more further about rejecting and accepting hypothesis. But if I summarize for this, you need to have a hypothesis. If you don't have hypothesis, you will not do any research. To do research, you need to have hypothesis. To see whether there is a significant difference or whether there is a significant association, you need to know what is normal. You understand what is normal by stating the null hypothesis. And you need to decide whether your hypothesis is one-tailed hypothesis or two-tailed hypothesis. And based on your hypothesis, you will decide what is the best test. Based on the test, you, then you decide the rejection region. Whether 5% is enough, whether you need 1%. And you will get, after data analysis process, you will get a test statistic. If it is T test, you will get a T value. And you have to find out the corresponding P value for the T value. Then you have to compare this P value versus the rejection region. Based on this, you can decide whether to reject null hypothesis or there is no evidence to reject null hypothesis. So, our hypothesis is mu h is significantly less than mu normal. So, our null hypothesis is mu h is not significantly less than mu n. Assume that you decide your rejection region as 5% and after data analysis everything, your p-value is 0 0.02. What do we do now? As 5% and this is one tail test, your null distribution is something like this. So your null distribution is this one and this is your rejection region which is 5%. As your p-value is 0 0.02, now you know that mu h should be somewhere less than this because this is 5%, so this is 2%, so it should be somewhere here. So only 2% of the values will be less than that. So now your mu h is here, the rejection region is here. Now this one falls within the rejection region or significant difference region because of that you can reject the null hypothesis you can reject the null hypothesis or the no difference based on this you reject null hypothesis if your p equals point 0, 8. That means this one is somewhere here. As 8% is there, no, we don't reject the null hypothesis. We think that's no evidence because 8% of the normal people are less than that. I hope you are clear. You have a basic understanding about hypothesis testing. In any of the tests that I'm going to discuss in the coming few lectures, you have to follow these procedures.